Judgment case be submitted. The court is back in session and the floor is given to the legal lawyer for either party to resume uh, her line of questioning. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have about 15 minutes left uh, to put questions to the civil partner. Uh, Mr. Singh Sobida, when we broke off, you were describing the meetings uh, and you were explaining that uh, there were meetings within your group and within your unit and then there were meetings which you said were larger, which were more exceptional. So can you tell us a little bit more about uh, these different kinds of meetings, about these, in particular, these meetings that were less frequent, but that happened apparently uh, at a higher level. Answer. The, the big meeting discussed about the harvest and work assignment as in the normal meeting and uh, we were encouraged to work hard to meet uh, the plan of ANCA so that uh, we could be uh, prosperous in the following years. So the meetings uh, were discussing about work assignment. Nothing else was discussed uh, in those meetings. And uh, it was said that uh, the country had already been uh, liberated, so we had to work hard for ourselves. And from uh, that time onward, uh, no one would uh, run to any other places. And there was uh, shouting, uh, bravo, bravo, uh, and uh, long live the revolution. I was there listening to the discussion and also to those kind of shouting. Thank you. You said that nobody could leave. Were you being watched on the work site? Answer. So we, there were groups and uh, subgroups in our unit and uh, chiefs of the subgroups and groups uh, would watch over the workers. And uh, once in a while, I saw militiamen or soldier walking uh, past the dam sites. And militiamen and soldier were watching over us as well. And in villages, there would be militiamen uh, watch uh, over the 17 April people. Thank you. Did you note back then if these militiamen were armed? Is this something that uh, you still remember today? that they were armed with uh, rifles, not uh, pistols. Thank you. Was there a loudspeaker on the work site that would broadcast uh, songs or, or announcements? Answer, yes, there were loudspeakers are broadcast always and the songs would be played over the loudspeaker. Let me tell the truth. The songs were mostly the revolutionary songs about the leaping forward the movement and about the liberation, so on and so forth. There were songs playing for workers but no romantic songs played over loudspeaker. 
as I said, songs uh, were about the liberal uh, revolution, liberation, and about comrades, so on and so forth. How often were these revolutionary songs played? Was it every day? Was it often? Yeah, I don't have answer on a daily basis. They were played on a daily basis. And they lived out of town. Always. Were there un other kinds of messages that were broadcast by the loudspeakers? Answer. No, no other messages on the loudspeaker. I have never heard any radio broadcasting uh, either. And when there was a meeting, the announcement would be made over the loudspeaker, I mean when there was a big meeting. And when there was any particular concern or matter, there would be also a broadcast over the loudspeakers. But from my uh, recollection, I heard most of the times revolutionary songs. you remember having heard security directions telling workers to be careful on the work site? Do you remember hearing that on the loudspeakers or not? Answer. No such messages. But we were told how to carry the earth and how to work properly. Some people uh, would sleep uh, while they were carrying or working, so we were warned and alerted while working. There was nothing but working at that time, and I have never encountered accidental uh, injury of a workers at that site. When you said that people would sleep standing up, did you witness any accidents? Me and Jun Kamin. Yes, sometimes uh, people got sprained ankles and uh, sometimes they uh, would sleep uh, while uh, working because uh, the soil uh, would be wet after it was dug. So some people had uh, minor, minor accident, but no dead injury at the first January work site, the place where I work. I do not know about accidents in other places. Thank you. Do you remember having seen someone or several people who were a little bit uh, different when you were at uh, the 1 January Dam worksite for those three months? Yeah, Answer. I saw an incident while I was uh, carrying earth. Uh, we were asked to be harder in our work and uh, we were told in advance. We were told by our unit chiefs and uh, group chief and we were told that uh, the senior cadres uh, would come to visit the work site. There were about uh, 10 uh, cadres Photo was shot at that time, and those people had their scarf around their necks, and uh, they had a white 
fair complexion, and I do not know whether one person among those people was a full pot. Every day we would uh, work in our normal pace, but on that day we had been told in advance that we had to be uh, quicker in our work. I saw those people on one occasion. I uh, wondered at that time for who they were, and uh, I was told that uh, those people were senior delegates, but uh, they were not uh, specifically identified by my colleagues. Did you ever see at the work site a film crew shooting a film there? Do you remember that? Remember a bad answer. No, I have never seen any film crews there shooting film. But I watch TV on uh, the previous occasion, and I could see uh, that uh, there was a film projecting about the Khmer Rouge period. I do not know whether there was a film shot during that regime. And I could see from that film that uh, the activities were of similar situation while I was working at the first January 10 site. Thank you. I have only a last series of questions before I give the floor to the co-prosecution. You said a little earlier on that there was no water where you would sleep, which meant that you had to go to the village to find water and get washed. So can you describe a little bit more in detail the hygiene conditions uh, on the work site uh, and in your sleeping quarters? Water condition at the work site was that the water was boiled in a big pot, and we could have water from that pot. And at our sleeping quarter, there was no water for us to wash ourselves. I walked past a village before I uh, re reached uh, my work, my sleeping quarter. And uh, in the midway, there was a well, and I could uh, clean myself with the water from that well. I could recall that at uh, the sleeping quarter, there was an improvised toilet. But at our work site, there was a big... Uh, container, we could uh, relieve ourselves by using that uh, big container. And I was afraid to fall into that container, so I went into the forest to relieve myself. When I arrived at the work site, I received a black clothing. I had my previous uh, clothing with me, but uh, they were not clean, and they did not look nice. And uh, I would use the fruit of the plant to clean my teeth. We were living like in a house, we had nothing to clean. I mean the soap or other materials. The clothes were tattered, and I was allowed to uh, repair my clothes. There were no threats for us to sue our tattered clothes. And uh, I uh, would use the fiber from the sack to use other straps so that I could uh, sew my uh, tattered clothes. 
during that time, the people that were classified into base people and uh, new people, and people were also also classified into classify into uh, petty bourgeoisie and another class. Thank you. My last question now. Under which circumstances did you leave the 1 January dam? Did you leave alone or did you leave with your group, with people from your village? Can you quickly explain to us the circumstances of your departure? I left that uh, work site uh, with my villagers. And I could recall that upon our return, they cooked a rice for us, and we were given a rice and the dry fish, a piece of dry fish to eat along the way. I uh, feel uh, very petty on the, my uh, parents at home, so I kept, I kept the, the rice and uh, the dry fish for my parents. And I was asked by my uh, parents why I did not eat uh, that kind of uh, rice and dry fish. I told them that uh, I had enough already at the work site. I was uh, very patient uh, during that time because I knew that uh, I was uh, endured hard work. After I arrived home, I uh, went to live at my original place. Madam Civil Party, I am done, Mr. President, and I'd like to specify before the chamber that Ms. Seng Sobida prepared a statement about her suffering that she will read at the end of today's hearing, and I think it's quite long. I think you should plan on 10 minutes uh, so that uh, you should therefore organize a hearing based on that. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. And now the floor is given to the co-prosecutors so that uh, they can put question to this civil party you may not wish to. Co-prosecutor, thank you, Mr. President, your honors, everyone in and around the courtroom. Good morning, uh, Madam Civil Party. I am the, in the National Deputy Co-Prosecutor. I have a few short questions uh, for you today. And uh, because of the time, I would like to ask you to give uh, as briefly as brief response as possible. I would like to know about your parents. What did they do before the, the 17 April 1975? Answer. My mother was a homemaker. My father was then the Khmer Isra, and after that, he worked as a soldier with Jan uh, Reang Sei at Kampung Stu Barak. Question. What was his position? What was his rank while working as a soldier? Answer. From 1970, from 1970, he was uh, working as a Kong Tas. Question, where did he work? Answer, he was working at uh, Chubamon Barak.
question, when did he stop working? Answer, he was in that position until the fall, the fall of Phnom Penh. Before that, the liberation seven days, seven days before the liberation was in a helicopter to Phnom Penh. My house was located in Kampung Su province and uh, my father was uh, working as a soldier at uh, a barrack in Kampung Su. He held a rank uh, before 1975, but he did not want anyone to know about his rank and position. But everyone uh, could know his position and his rank. Question. What did he do to his uh, biography? Answer, he always concealed his biography. But my mother believed that Sihanu uh, was uh, the initiator and also uh, was the one who created the uh, Khmer Rouge regime. My mother wanted to, she was waiting and wanted to tell everyone later that uh, my uh, father was a former soldier. My, as for my father, he told uh, my mother to burn uh, everything and my mother could uh, keep a photo, a portrait of uh, my father's photo. Oh, Prosecutor, I would like uh, to move on. Uh, you stated before the chamber and you answered the question of uh, colleague lawyer that you arrived at Barai Chuan Dyke before you reached uh, the 1st January dam site. So where did you stay? Answer. I uh, did not stay in that pagoda. My uh, sleeping quarter was uh, handed away from that pagoda. I uh, did not recall the village where I stayed at that time, but it was near or in Kampung Thmo. Question. Did you stay in a place near Barai Chuan Daik and how far was it from Barai Chuan Daik? Answer, I could not give you the right estimate. When I was bathing myself with the uh, water from the well, I was told by uh, the my senior that uh, please do not go to that pagoda. So perhaps the pa pagoda was quite close to the work site and uh, we were warned not, not to walk around that kind of pagoda, perhaps some uh, would see activities taking place at that site. Some people uh, would uh, tremble after returning from that work site. I was warned and told by my senior colleague that uh, please do not uh, approach that pagoda. Question, did they tell you why you should not uh, go to that Abarai John Dai Pagoda. They answered, they told me that they saw a group of five or ten people were asked to split woods. And some people said that uh, rest of uh, women were cut off from their body and uh, was hung in that pagoda. I was told by uh, my senior colleague and I was warned that uh, please uh, try not to worry or try not to get more information about that uh, pagoda. Prosecutor, thank you. While you were working at that 1st January 
to what to say. What was the water condition? Uh, you stated already that uh, you were told to fetch the water. So where did you go and get that water? Answer, there was a hall in the work site where the water was boiled in a big pot. And the boiled water would be put into a large container for us to drink. Some people had tubes, some others had a uh, water container so they could uh, put and collect water by using that uh, tube and container. Sometime, as I said, I was told to fetch uh, the water for some workers to drink. Question, what was the water level seeker? hygiene enough for drinking purpose and was it boiled for everyone's uh, consumption? And so it was boiled for water at so the work site. However, I did not know about uh, the water itself. Usually in the, in the area, the water was fetched from a creek, a stream or a river or from a pond. There was no tap water. And if one was too thirsty, uh, he or she could uh, drink from a from a small uh, crack on the road or a small uh, pond. But uh, usually at uh, that small uh, shelter, they bought water for workers uh, to consume. Questions: What about the? Sanitation was the uh, working site clean over there many flies and so at the kitchen it was not that clean there was no dining table we used hay or tree leaves or uh, as a cover and we put our bowls or dish on top and of course the bowl and the condition was not that clean there was no soap to wash our dishes question during the time that you were working at the dam work site were you allowed to to have a casual uh, conversation or chit chat or could you yourself uh, take a rest when you were tired? Answer, no, we could not uh, take a rest whenever we wanted. Otherwise, everyone would uh, take a break when he or she needed. There was a set uh, time for uh, rest and of course we could not chit chat in uh, groups and we could not have a free uh, conversation here or there. We uh, taught ourselves to plant a kapok tree that is to keep quiet. Question. What about the work uh, quota? Who actually uh, measure the land plot and set a work uh, quota for you to dig or to uh, carry? And after uh, you complete your work at the end of the day, who actually measured uh, how much work you had done for that day? Answer. For Frey Prasad district, Singh was a man who uh, was in charge of that affair. He was the one who uh, measured the land for Frey Prasad district workers. And that will be subdivided into various uh, communes within the district. And he was the one who uh, took control of the land uh, measurement 
for workers in uh, the uh, district. And above him, I did not know who, who was in charge. I myself uh, focused on carrying the dirt. Question. Was Sin an ordinary worker or was he a, a group chief, a unit chief? Of what position did he hold? Answer. He was a villager from Grey Sop district, but he was appointed as a unit chief in charge of our workers, of, our, of my group. And he was in charge of all the workers in Grey Prosop district. Question. And who actually decided on the work that you did and that uh, it was considered complete so that you can move on to the next segment? Answer. L it was likely that Sim was in charge of that as well, and I did not know whether he made a joint decision with others or not. I only moved to the next segment. Uh, when I was instructed to do so. Question. While you work at the first January demo website, did you know or did you have any observation that some workers disappeared? I mean disappeared and never returned. Answer. On the issue of the uh, disappearance, we were we were told that uh, the that particular uh, worker or those workers were required to work elsewhere. For instance, at back back at the village, I heard the other senior uh, workers there or workers who were older than me told me uh, about this. Or while they were discussing about the issue, their people were transferred to work elsewhere, though I myself did not know the reason. Question. Did you observe that there were uh, any jam people working at uh, the work site? Answer, uh, yes. There were a Khmer Islam or jam people who had been evacuated to live in my village and uh, they worked uh, with us, the Khmer people. There was no uh, discrimination against them, and it seems that uh, some Cham people, or a few, who were so assigned to work with us at the first January Dam work site. Question What about the, the food offered to the Cham people? Was the same kind of food given to them, or they had to have their own uh, special food? Answer, it was difficult for the Cham people as they did not eat the pork. So when there was a, a soup with pork, then they did not eat, but they, they could ask for uh, soy sauce to eat uh, with their rice. But I, I myself uh, was not sure uh, about uh, the arrangement, although I never witnessed that any special, specially prepared food uh, was made for a charm of people. Question. And I'll move on to another topic uh, regarding your elder sister. in uh, your uh, documents, that is the 22 slash 2531, here in uh, Khmer is 0552159, in English 0106-3843, and in French 0109-5759. You describe about your other sister who was forced to marry, and you said, and allow me to quote the translation in early 77, my other sister who was 16 years old was forced to marry in a 
group of 21 couples, end of quote. Where were you when your elder sister was forced to marry? Answer, I was at the village at the time. Question, uh, which commune and district? Answer, at the Kailu village, Prekrasava district. I was living with my uh, parents and uh, siblings. Question. Can you tell the call the name of your elder sister? Answer. Lu Siu Jane is my elder sister's name. Question. You said that she was forced to marry. Can you describe the condition of the marriage, how it was arranged? Uh, there was a meeting at night time. I also attended at the meeting. They told us that Anka from the above set an instruction for people to get uh, married. And we were wondering how come those people already had their name on the list. So those who, whose names appear on the list uh, were uh, re required to uh, stay behind. And then they made an announcement. But I myself, I, I didn't go. I wanted to see what happened. And then they announced that uh, this woman uh, would marry this man. And I was pretty young. So I ran uh, to tell my mother about this. And next morning, I didn't know what happened. And maybe my mother went to tell them that uh, my other sister was too young and she didn't want her to, to get married. And it was likely that she was told not uh, to disobey the instruction. And as I said that the historical will was in motion and if you interfere it with your leg or your arm, it would be crushed. And for that reason, nobody refuse uh, the uh, instruction. I was not allowed to attend the ceremony itself, but I asked my other sister that my sister's name was announced to marry a man by the name of Gum Chad, and who was a, a former intellectual or a pilot uh, from Phnom Penh, although I am uh, unclear on his background. Then the names of the 21 couples were announced and they got married and they were given a set of a mosquito net and a blanket. Question, did your other sister say whether she uh, consented to the proposed marriage? Answer, she told me that she would not uh, marry that man uh, she didn't love him. Actually, the man was uh, just uh, our uh, neighbor. And she didn't want to marry him. But uh, she was forced to and she could not uh, refuse. Question. And what happened later on to your other sister? Answer. After she got uh, married, I recall that it was around uh, February, although I, I am unclear, as that was the time that I left for the first century dam website. My other sister was deprived of food, and she was about one month uh, pregnant. And I heard my mother said that they didn't go along well with her husband and that they stopped or uh, consummated their marriage, although they were sleeping together. And um, 
maybe because they monitor the, their activity at night, then they decided uh, to, to consummate the, the marriage. And I only heard from my mother regarding this, that uh, later on she was deprived of food, and I asked my mother why. And that's what she told me, that because she initially didn't uh, consummate the marriage. I returned uh, home at the time for three days since I had a serious fever. Question in the same document that I quoted, you said that your other sister was uh, four months into her pregnancy and that she was uh, subsequently taken away and killed. Can you tell us the circumstance around this event? Answer. At the time, her name and her husband's name were announced that they would be transferred to live in another village. She was uh, pregnant at the time, uh, and uh, she was four months pregnant, and that announcement was in uh, July. Since she was pregnant, my mother had a pity on her, and my father was not uh, in the village, as he was assigned to work uh, along the uh, long Red Mountain uh, Range. My mother went to seek permission from them not to uh, transfer my other sister. And in fact, allow me to say that this, that was not the first uh, transfer that the people had been uh, transferred to live in another village. It was a continuous activity of transfer and my mother wanted uh, them to, to hold on the transfer of my other sister until my uh, father returned. There was a big uh, pond uh, behind the, the village. So they went to get uh, my father, but they didn't go to, to get me from the work site. Later on, my parents and my other sisters packed their belongings and they were put onto a truck, a covered truck with other villagers and uh, they were told to go to another village and they were brought into an area called Salachan and they were instructed to remove their jewelry and the clothes and other uh, valuable things there. I only heard this from my other in-law as he was walking, crossing the area and uh, she observed uh, what happened that my other sister was the young one, was the last one uh, there and my mother was hugging her and she was uh, instructing my elder sister to take off her clothes, and she was probably wearing uh, two sets of, uh, two layers of uh, clothing, and they forced her to remove uh, the clothing. And then, after they removed the first layer, then she was put back into the truck, and they uh, dropped them off at uh, Jury Ampel, uh, Pagoda. Then they e detained them there and they killed the some women first. They were detained in a temple in the pagoda and uh, the execution lasted for three days and during the three days they played the music over the loudspeaker to mask the execution. And my, sis, my, my uh, relative who lived in a nearby village heard about what happened and she actually later on applied as a civil party in this case.
I myself did not know what happened at the time, and only later when I uh, met my relative at Chaba on Pho, I was told about uh, uh, what happened. I never learned of uh, what happened during the regime. And later on, during a meeting, they asked, uh, they asked us to raise our hand if we had our uh, relative or family members who had been evacuated to another village. And I did not raise my hand. And later on, when I arrived at a work site called Rolum Pnu, co prosecutor uh, interrupt. Due to the uh, time constraint, I'd like to hand the floor to my international uh, colleague. Thank you, Mr. President. President. Thank you. And the international co prosecutor, do you have the floor? Thank you. Madam Witness, I want you to just complete what you were talking about. You mentioned the death of your older sister. Did any other members of your family, were any other members of your family with her, and what happened to them? There, was my, there were my mother, my father, my younger siblings, all of my family members uh, died at the time, and only I survived because I worked far away, so they didn't have a chance to go and get me back uh, to the village for the evacuation. I had a great uh, pity for my older parents. And actually, when I decided to return to the work site, I did not fully recover from my fever, but I, I wanted to go there in order to work hard to show them that I worked hard so they didn't mistreat my family. But unfortunately, they did, and they killed all my family members. Thank you. And you just tell me when you're ready to continue. If, if you need more time, that's fine. I can uh, continue. Um, Madam Civil Party, the first witness to discuss the first January dam was a village chief under the Khmer Rouge, and he supervised workers at the dam. He told us that new people and base people were treated the same. Was that your experience? Can you comment on that? the same conditions, but the new people didn't have any right. We were considered as their enemies. And only the best people who uh, had the position to control us, and the best people amongst themselves, uh, the, the lower uh, part of the lower class of the best people even treated us worse than the uh, other part of the best uh, people. I didn't know why they seems to consider us as their enemies. Whatever we did uh, was wrong. Thank you. Just, I want to clarify something about your father. Um, I didn't understand what rank. Do you know if he had a particular rank? Was he a soldier or an officer?
He was a soldier. Thank you. So thank you very much for coming and telling us about this experience. I want to concentrate now on the three months that you spent at the 1st of January Dam. And I'd like you to explain to us what life was like for you and those that you were with. I'd like to discuss the rights that you had. Did you have the right to go where you wanted when you returned at night from working to the village, to your sleeping quarters? Could you go anywhere you wanted? Did you have freedom of movement? We didn't have any freedom of movement. During the three month period I worked there, I didn't, I was not permitted to visit home and that applies to all workers from uh, Rusekai village. Only upon the uh, completion of the three month period were we allowed to uh, return to uh, the village. Were you allowed to practice religion in these difficult circumstances? Could you do ceremonies to Buddha and if you know, were the Cham people allowed to practice their religion? No. There was no pagoda, and we were not allowed to practice our religion, although uh, maybe, 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 maybe be uh, rather some workers did it secretly, but it was not uh, publicly allowed. Did you have freedom of speech? Could you say to your friend, we're really working too hard? Could you say at a meeting, they, they should, you should reduce the hours that we have to work? to challenge the uh, working condition. However, we could uh, speak about the working condition only to our closer uh, colleagues who work uh, nearby. Did people have a right to be, well, let me st start this question over. In your unit, was your unit all women? Your work unit at the first January dam? There was a mixture of men and women in my uh, unit, and there were also uh, some jam uh, workers. Were families allowed to be together? Did husbands and wives spend time together? Did women have their children with them? Side, uh, we were all single and married. That is uh, those from my village. Did you feel at that time that you had a choice about continuing to work or not? You indicated you agreed to go there. Did you feel once you got to the dam that you could leave if you wanted to? Stop working. We didn't have that right. Once we decided uh, to go, we had to be there until the uh, completion of the work. You said that you came from Prek Prasap district. Do you know what sector that was under the Khmer Rouge regime? It was in the east zone. I uh, do not know which sector it was in. Can you describe what 
happened when you were first had a meeting and you said you agreed to go to the dam? What was said to you at that time? you referring to the meeting which was held uh, we, uh, for the organization of the workforce to go to the first January Dam work site? Yeah, that's what you meant. We were told that uh, they organized uh, the, the, the forces throughout the country for people to go there and it also applies to our uh, Freeport South District. Some of us would be requested to go to the first January Dam work site, while others would go to various other work sites uh, within Kampung Cham or to Swai Deep. And I myself wanted to go to build dam because I heard that uh, at all combat the working and living condition there are worse or worse. As we were uh, told that people were workers at the first century dam work site had a better food than the, those who worked at all combat. And if we didn't uh, decide to go, we would be selected to go anyway. Thank you. So did anyone re refuse to go? No no one dared to, to refuse. If the person was uh, unwell, the person uh, would allow to stay behind until he or she recovered, then he or she would be sent to uh, another work site. But nobody dared uh, to refuse. You said that you heard that the food situation was better at the dam than other work sites. Did you have enough to eat when you were working those three months at the first January dam? No, the food was insufficient. We were hungry, but the food was not enough, and the soup was mainly uh, watery. There was no uh, there was rarely any meat in uh, the soup, and the condition was even worse at other work sites as the gruel was uh, purely uh, watery. So that there's not confusion, in an earlier answer, you were asked about the food and how it changed, and you talked about eating pumpkin and getting sticky rice every 10 days. Where was that, that you were able to eat pumpkin and get sticky rice every 10 days? was at the work site every uh, tenth day they made they prepared a dessert and a little bit of it was given to each worker and in fact the dessert was made from our village and then uh, delivered to the work site and distributed it to us um, I'm out of time thank you for the questions I have one very brief question you indicated that you were tall for your age when you were 11 or 12 years old. How tall are you now? I am, I was about uh, 1.2 or 1, uh, 1 1.3 meters high at the time that is uh, when something fell. And Other people, including my other siblings, said that I was lucky that I was allowed uh, to go and work at the work site because if I were to stay with my family, then I would be taken away along with my family members and executed. However, when I was young, I was uh, quite active and I enjoyed uh, working. At the time, I think I was about 30-something uh, kilograms only. My time is over. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.
us then thank you. It is now an appropriate time for our lunch break. We take a break now and resume at 1.30. Court officer, please assist the civil party at the waiting room for the civil parties and the witnesses during the lunch break and invite her as well as the TPL staff back into the uh, courtroom at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are invited to take Kirsten Prawn back into back to the waiting room downstairs and have him returned to participate in the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess.